and welcome back to Turning the Tide. We are visiting with Sean Barrows, who is a musician, uh, one of my favorites, as a matter of fact, who has is having some great successes right now, which we talked about in the first half hour of the show. We just listened to Sail Away Soldier. Sean, why don't you tell us about the emotion and the reason uh, behind why you wrote that song? Yeah, Sail Away Soldier is, uh, I mean... First of all, we wanted we we wrote it and we we produced it to to dedicate it to the families of fallen soldiers. You know, there's a we understand like I mean as a I I don't have a sibling or or a relative that's serving, but I do have really close friends, including my my best friend growing up, who's currently in Afghanistan, and um, I know what it's like to say goodbye and not know if you're going to see them again. And uh, so that song is kind of from the perspective of the families and the friends and the loved ones who have to say goodbye and, uh, you know, wonder if they're going to see their, you know, their loved one again, but at the same time knowing that their son or their friend or their brother or whatever, or their daughter or whatever is doing something great is, and, and it's something that they can be proud of, you know? So it's the, it's the feeling of patriotism is the feeling of pride in, in your, you know, in your, your loved one, your significant other, whoever it is. And or a friend or a friend. Uh huh. Oh, absolutely it's, beautiful. Yeah, it's it's just that kind of that that perspective from there, from there side. <laughs> it's it's no, it's okay. It's a gorgeous song, and and uh, I I am positive that you are going to ha- you already have great success, Sean. But I think you are going to find yourself hitting the top very soon, and Thanks. it's songs like this that that make the difference and that will help get you there. Now, you and I have talked about this before on other stations and at different times, but I would like to. Go into how music makes a difference in the schools, and you know, as you and I, you already mentioned in the first half hour that that uh, schools were cutting back on their music programs and so on and so forth. And I happen to know that that uh, accomplished musicians, kids who study music early on and keep studying it all the way through high school, do better at math and do better at science. I mean, it makes a difference in their reasoning abilities, and and I would like to know. Um, because, uh, you know, being a writer, that's what I know best. Music is not what I know best. <laughs> so I would like to know your thoughts on that, on why it is so important to save the music programs in the schools. Well, so music has many applications. Music education, when when kids grow up learning uh, Beethoven or Wagner or, you know, um, various different types of, of classical and jazz and, and just a wide variety, they have more of a, of a solid base of of uh, musical background and education, they they uh, grow up understanding a lot of different concepts. Uh, I mean, one of the things that I've always noticed is is in literature. Actually, uh, whenever I read a novel, you know, I I usually like to I I I'm most entertained by the books that are the are the most challenging because, um, I mean that I think from a musical perspective, I uh, I feel like I, I like to hear all the different counter melodies. It's kind of like that's that's my musical uh, perspective of, of a liter- you know, literary work. If there's multiple characters in the book and multiple stories and multiple things going on, it's it's a lot like a big symphony, you know. It's uh, and and by comparing those two, I've been I've managed to like I can understand the uh, the story in a different way, but I also re- you know retain it to memory a lot more uh, easily. And I think you know, so music has helped me with with English classes and literary classes. And just understanding uh, anything that I read it, with with that much more depth, and help it, it's it's helped me remember more than anything else what I read. Um, I've also noticed that it's helped me with math, and uh, my math skills. Uh, math has always been an easy subject for me because I was raised musically. You know, I took piano lessons when I was really young, so I was always like the the first one to finish my my uh, homework or my, my work in the classroom. So I never actually had math homework. That was always the easiest subject for me through school because I could just finish it so quickly. I already knew it before the teacher even explained it to me. And it's mostly because I had the mathematical mind that was programmed uh, from all these lessons that I had taken with piano and learning how to, you know, learning these um, arpeggios and interv- intervals and various different uh, counter counter melodies and things and how, um, you know, how different timing works. I mean, I, I don't understand. I don't expect you guys to understand what I'm saying, but um but music in general, it just has a very mathematical approach. And students who, who are in these music programs, who grow up learning an instrument and, and learning these big symphonies and uh, choral pieces, 
they just do so much better in college and high school in uh, all these all these different subjects, mostly math and in my my case English. And I, I also see that one of the other applications that I've always seen is music helps students master and understand their emotions. So the, uh, the for for me that just seems that just says these students will be more rational for the rest of their lives. They'll understand their emotions so they can interpret them to mean either irrational or rational things. They'll be able to distinguish the two. And uh, I feel like that's such an important thing. That's one of the reasons why we have so many problems in America is because so many kids don't understand their own emotions that they act irrationally. And uh, we see that with Occupy Wall Street once again. That's, I, I see that as these kids are just they, – they feel an emotion. They're upset about something, so they're just going to protest whatever. And that's kind of that's kind of the vibe that I get with these kids is that they're just upset. They don't know what they're upset about. They don't know how to rationally uh, understand these emotions, so they just latch on to whatever everybody else is doing. And and I've actually seen that like a lot of these, I mean, the, the tactic with Occupy Wall Street, they they get paid. There's a there's a core group of these kids that get paid to be there so that the rest of them come and see a big group. And anytime you see a protest rally that that gets paid to do, you know. What they're protesting, and you just you know you can't really believe what they're doing. Right. It's, it just it loses all credibility. But uh, I mean, th this is the perfect example. These are college kids, uh, college age kids, most of them who can't understand their own emotions, and that's because they haven't grown up with the uh, proper education. They they've been deprived of it, and we can't we can't let that happen again with these high school and junior high kids and elementary school kids who are currently in school. We need to build up these music programs and enhance them and, and give the teachers who are doing a great job incentives to do to continue doing so. You know, and uh, I mean, there's a lot of issues in, pol in politics with that, too, because, I mean, I've come across a lot of teachers who have tenure and they're terrible and they're, they're doing such a bad job, but there's nothing that the principal can do or whatever. They're just going to stay there. Which is what's wrong with the system. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, th that was I saw that in the inner city of Chicago, there was a school there. The choir, I mean, these kids could barely sing in unison the melody. They didn't sing any harmonies. They didn't know how to do anything tricky. They just sang the basic melody of a pop song. And um, I, and I saw this teacher. I'm like, what are you teaching these kids? I mean, you're just kind of – she was just the laziest teacher. And so when when you see that, when you see the, the kind of issues that we have with the education system, I mean, I've I've sought out the, the programs that have solid and, uh, you know, really talented teachers and those are the ones that I've been donating money to. You know, oh, you, know you need to get a hold of American Leadership Academy in Spanish Fork in your hometown. Um, oh yeah. That that's an amazing school. My nieces and nephew go there and they are excelling like you can't believe I can't believe the teachers and programs they have there, Sean. No, I know I know Rick Lund. He's the choir teacher and he's yes. amazing. Yeah, and actually Rick uh, we've talked um I've talked with Rick quite a few times about organizing something and we'll definitely get him involved in the next you know, Utah concert. I think the next Utah one will be at, at BYU. Nice. So, so we'll get ALA involved for sure on that one. Great. Yeah, that would be awesome because I, I can't tell you how impressed I am with that school. I, oh, I think yeah. all schools should pattern themselves after them. Oh, definitely. <laughs> and, I mean, I'm all for supporting the charter schools and private schools. You know, it doesn't have to be public schools. I just want to I want to find the teachers who are really making a difference and give them the support that they deserve. And I think that's what the, you know the, our system is all about. You know, it's if you're if you're talented, if you're if you're truly sincere, and you're really trying to make a difference, you should be promoted. You should be rewarded. You should be given more responsibility because you you have the uh, the will and you have the right um, purpose for what you're doing. And uh, you know, so I, I'm looking at that's that's kind of one of the things is the teachers that we we go to first are the ones that are really building up their programs and really making a difference with what they've got. So if there's a teacher out there who thinks that, that they fit that criteria, how do they get a hold of you to be included in the in the program? You know, so they, they can contact us through my website, which is liveformusictour.com. Um, if they want a more direct email, they could just go to, uh, I mean, probably one of the easiest ones is liveformusictour at gmail.com. Uh, I mean, there's also a booking at liveformusictour.com as well, but that one's Spelled a little funny, so I would say the easiest one to remember is liveformusictour at gmail.com. 
Okay, I will post that up on the interview so people can see it as well as hear it. Okay, yeah. Sean, any last thing you want to talk about? Have we covered everything that, that you and I wanted to talk about, or is there something else that uh, I wasn't aware of that you want to share? Uh, you know, that's that's the majority of it. I would say, um, you know, I mean, I'm just excited to get this tour underway. I'm really, I'm really curious and excited to see just how many high schools we can get involved, how many – you know, especially with that Carnegie Hall show, you know, we're going to really get a lot of a lot of high schools interested and we want to probably hold some kind of a competition to see who wants it or deserves it the most. Um, you know, I mean, we uh, my my team and I are really just really excited to to go around the country and around the world uh and just see how how many kids really need this, how much we can do to help them. And uh you know, I mean, I I'm really hoping that we can connect with all the people who really deserve this, who really want this. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm also looking forward to releasing my new album and, you know, maybe uh, doing some movies and things like that so I can get more into the mainstream media and uh, make a difference from, you know, from a higher perspective. So uh, Absolutely. Now, there, you know, my show now is on live stream on the Turning the Tide channel. Yeah. And there's a new television show coming on that channel called Simply Stated. Uh, it's a talk show. I'm going to give them your information so that they can interview you because... Right. You, um, what you are doing and everything you're involved in fits their fits their their criteria just like right to a T. Oh, great! So I will. Uh, Kai Kamai is the young man who will be getting a hold of you. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm I'm all for it. Let's do it. Great. Okay, and you just know I have to end the show, your interview with Hop Skip and a Jump. So uh -huh. why don't you tell people um, how that song came about, and uh, then then uh, we will. Finish with your interview, and we will listen to Hop, Skip, and a Jump. <laughs> Hop, Skip, and a Jump is is just a, a a high energy big band song. It's one of those that like I've always just kind of felt in my bones. You know, it's it's a I've always felt that rhythm. I've always wanted to sing something like it, and I just it just kind of came out like I really you know I just I, I was in I hit this mood where I just really wanted to write something that was just fun and got everybody dancing. And, you know, so I, I wrote that song with just the, the fast up tempo. And every time I perform this song, I get people coming up to me and saying, that's a great song. That's a hit. Or or they just dance all over the floor. I get people dancing on the stage. It's it's the time when everybody grabs their partner and they just swing dance. Oh, it it's is so fun so to see much that. Fun. Yeah, it is. It <laughs> even gets me moving. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah. Well, make sure you're moving in your seat. <laughs> oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Sean, thank you so much for dropping by Turning the Tide. We have been speaking with Sean Barrows, who is a musician. Um, what is the name of your last CD, Sean? Uh, the one that I've recently released is called Emotion Constellation. And where can people pick that up? iTunes, Amazon, any of the online retail stores. CD Baby, all of them? I don't think CD Baby has it anymore. I took it down from there, I think. Oh, okay. All right. So Am Amazon... Amazon, and, iTunes, Rhapsody, Spotify, you know, okay. any any of those. Great. Well, I, I can highly recommend any of um, Sean's CDs. They are fabulous. Sean, thank you for joining us on Turning the Tide today. Thank you, Candace. All right. Have a good day. You too. Bye.